What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to Funnel Heads. Today we're going to be doing the very last Carnival Ecstasy full ship tour. Uh, as of this recording, the Carnival Ecstasy is unfortunately making its way to Turkey. It has been sold for scrap, uh, so this will be the last tour that you'll see. Uh, we're going to start on Deck 7, which of course is the art gallery midship, and honestly we would have never even found this hallway if it hadn't been for the ship tour, so really pretty hallway to walk through. Of course, this leads out to the main atrium or the hub of the ship, and we absolutely love this atrium with the neon lights everywhere. You can walk through this atrium any point during the day or at night, and it will always look different with the colors of the neon. Uh, it is also decorated for Halloween since we went in October, October 10th uh, with the Frightfully Fun banner and all the decorations. Now in the atrium, you'll also see the shore excursions desk, the guest services desk, the internet cafe, as well as the main bar, the atrium bar. We also love the atrium on this ship because it does have a glass ceiling. So sometimes you'll get a peak of the sun or the moonlight pe uh, peeking through. Uh, and it really just sets the stage for the entire ship. Now moving up to deck eight, all the way forward, you have the main showroom on the Carnival Ecstasy, which is the Blue Sapphire Lounge. Here you'll see Broadway style shows as well as playlist productions. The cruise director has many activities that are held here as well as the fun squad. Of course, bingo is here uh, very frequently. On the last sailing of the Carnival Ecstasy, they also had the Q&A with John Heald here as well as the final auction with the Carnival Ecstasy memorabilia. Now still on deck eight, right outside the Blue Sapphire Lounge, you have all of the fun shops. Of course, this is your souvenir store. There's also jewelry, cologne, perfume, as well as your liquor, cigarette, and kind of just general necessity store. Uh, on the Carnival Ecstasy for this last sailing, they did have a lot of merchandise that was significantly reduced, especially Carnival Ecstasy memorabilia, as well as if you spent a certain amount, um, you were able to get certain free items items like coffee mugs, keychains, magnets, things of that nature, was, which was really cool to see. Now back in the atrium on deck eight, there's quite a few venues that you can access from here. Uh, first off, you have the Circle C area, which of course is the hangout for 12 to 14 year olds. Also our favorite area for late night, hanging out, listening to music is coming up right here. And that is the Neon Bar. We absolutely love this area, not only for the entertainment and meeting other guests, but just the look of it. Look how gorgeous all of the neon lights are. I wish we had a bar back home that looked just like this. Um, and we kept debating back and forth, me and Michelle, on if we could take one neon light, which one would it be? And we both agreed on the steamer bar uh, neon light that's coming right up on the corner there. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful. So if there was one that you guys could take home, let us know in the comment section below which one it would be. Now continuing on deck eight, we have the Explorer's Library, which was really a unique room. It was absolutely gorgeous on the inside. Unfortunately, we didn't get to spend much time in this room. Um, I guess fortunately, because usually when we're in a yeah, game room or a library, uh, it's either you know inclement weather or a longer cruise, like an Alaska cruise. Uh, so if we had bad weather, you could definitely catch us in there playing some games, reading books, borrowing books, but uh, just a beautiful, beautiful area the decorations in here with the of course globe and then the ship model uh, really stands out one of the items during the auction 
uh, to raise money for St. Jude was actually one of those beautiful end tables. They weighed a metric ton, so I have no idea how the person who won that item got it home, but uh, hopefully they are enjoying it and it got home safe. Continuing on deck eight, you have the Your Time Dining Room, which is the Windstar Dining Room, named after this beautiful ship model here. Now, the Your Time Dining, of course, is you pick when you want to dine. When you're hungry, you just check in on the Carnival Hub app, and then you wait until your table's ready. On this ship, I think the longest wait time we had was about 25 minutes, which wasn't the end of the world. Uh, it is convenient that the atrium bar is one floor down, so we typically would just, you know, grab a drink, listen to some live music while we were waiting for our table to be ready. And lastly, all the way back on deck eight or the after the ship, you have the winged song dining room, which is different from the other dining room, which is wind star. Uh, it does confuse a lot of people since it's very similar named. Uh, and here is going to be the pick a time dining, whether it's early or late dining. The advantages of this is of course, you have a specific time each and every night where you come to dine uh, and you get the same crew members each night as well as, you know, the people at your table, whether you're joining other guests or sitting by yourself. Of course, this uh, dining room is named after this ship. And that's the model of the ship, of course. Now moving one floor up, Deck 9 Promenade, you have the Warehouse Arcade, which is one of Little Man's favorite areas on the entire ship. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of my least favorite areas because if you were to ask me what you know, one item on the ship is the biggest ripoff, it would be the arcade. You could literally go through $20 here in the matter of moments. I swear you could you wouldn't be able to burn $20 in the casino before you could burn it in the arcade. Now coming out of the arcade on deck nine promenade, you do have one of our favorite spots on the ship and that is Alchemy Bar. Uh, and the Alchemy Bar on this ship is absolutely massive. Plenty of seating for everyone. Uh, if you don't know what the Alchemy Bar is, it is basically a create your own cocktail. They have amazing mixologists, amazing bartenders that use fresh ingredients to create just amazing drinks. Uh, specific to you know what you like, what you don't like. Uh, they also have a menu where you can choose different drinks. Uh, a lot of people's favorite drink is the basil drop, but I would recommend talking to the bartender, talking to the mixologist, let them know kind of, again, what you like, what you don't like, and they have created some of the best drinks I've ever tasted. At the after the ship on deck nine, you do have the Starlight Lounge. This is where a lot of the comedians are going to hold their different shows, whether it's a general audience, stand-up act, or an adult-only stand-up act. This is where you will find that. Also, they did have the Platinum Diamond Party hosted here as well for you know returning guests that hold those statuses. Beyond the Starlight Lounge, you do have the Serenity Deck. However, I did record this at 5 a.m., so it was completely dark, so we're gonna get back to the Serenity once we do the Outer Deck tours later in the video. Now coming out of the Starlight Lounge, we're entering Alchemy Bar again. Of course, massive area on this ship. And now we are getting into the City Lights Boulevard, which consists of a few different venues along the way. One of our favorite uh, spots to walk. Uh, in this glass case, you have all of the specific Carnival Ecstasy memorabilia for the years, uh, you know, going to Ports of Call for the first time, 
uh, flags that were flown on the ship, keys to cities, and so much more. These items were auctioned off. A lot of them were auctioned off on the final sea day of the Carnival Ecstasy, and we raised over $40,000 for Groove of St. Jude, or I should say St. Jude's Children's Hospital, uh, which was, of course, an amazing cause, and a lot of guests got to keep you know, a piece of the ship's history. Next up on City Light Boulevard, you have the Everything's $10 store, which I believe is unique on the Carnival Ecstasy. Um, I've never seen this store before. If it's on other ships, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but just a unique little store to browse through and shop. Next up, you have the Stripes Dance Club, which luckily for us, we did not get to see uh, much of the inside of this venue. I say luckily because usually if you're in there, it's uh, bad news for the next day. As far as our age anyway, we would instantly regret being in there late. Following the Stripes Dance Club, you have the Rolls Royce Cafe, which of course is the coffee shop on board the ship. Uh, it is missing the actual Rolls Royce. Next up, you have Chinatown, which we absolutely love the design of this room, all of the decorations. They did this room so well. And unfortunately, we didn't spend much time in this room, this cruise, just because we were so busy, but glad we got, you know, uh, this room captured on video because it really is beautiful. This room is where they hold a lot of the karaoke events and um, we've enjoyed, you know, watching karaoke in the past. We definitely don't go up to sing karaoke. Nobody wants to hear that. Now, as you probably noticed, it is way lighter now. I actually looked at the footage that we recorded and it was so dark uh, early in the morning when we did this that I wanted to go back and get some better footage. Of course, those stairs to the left is going to be stairs that lead up to the Lido deck. And then we come to the Crystal Palace Casino Bar right there followed by Cherry on Top, the candy shop. Now, I was told, I believe John Heald had mentioned it, that back when the Carnival Ecstasy first debuted, that was actually a little breakfast spot. Um, I do want to confirm that, but it does look like a little breakfast spot. So really cool that they kind of changed that and still used it as something else. Of course, everybody's favorite area or love-hate area. <laughs> if you're winning, you love it. If you're losing money, you hate it. And that is the Crystal Palace Casino. And it's actually a pretty large casino, you know, given the size of the ship. Of course, you have slot machines, bunch of card tables, really anything you want in On this cruise, we did dabble a little bit in the casino. We just played roulette a few nights, uh, not very long, probably about 30 minutes to an hour each time. Uh, was up a little bit, but uh, that was it for us. <laughs> Now coming out of the Crystal Palace Casino, of course we're back into the atrium and look at all those neon lights. It's still gorgeous early in the morning. Of course, this is all the pixel gallery area. You know, during the day, of course, there'll be pictures all along the walls. A Carnival Ecstasy never got the fun 2.0 upgrade where everything was digital and you can see it on your phone. So they did it the old school way, printed photos, and you just kind of had to find them throughout the cruise. What we typically do is find them each day or the following day, put them all in one pile and kind of put them in a certain area. So that way we know uh, we can look back at them and then pick the ones that we want at the end of the cruise. Absolutely love that glass ceiling.
Now moving from deck 9 promenade all the way to deck 12 sports deck, we have of course the spa and gym. Unfortunately, I didn't get to enjoy the spa and didn't get to go to the gym this cruise. There was just too much to do. No regrets can work out at home and I can always enjoy the spa on the next cruise. Now, as far as the gym goes, this gym is on the small side. Of course, it's a smaller ship, uh, but it has all the equipment that you would need to get a big, a good workout in. We also love that it's all the way forward. So uh, specifically those treadmills on the left side, they are facing the front of the ship all the way forward. So when you're running on them or walking on them, it feels like, you know, you're just walking on the ocean, which is really cool. Let's explore some of the outside decks, starting off with the Lido deck, deck 10. This is going to be the main deck area for outside activities, pools, hot tubs. Absolutely love the little yellow umbrellas surrounding, uh, you know, the pool and the hot tubs. A great aesthetic and it looks amazing during the day and during the night. I remember when Carnival used to put those little umbrellas in, you know, your alcoholic drinks. Uh, I don't know if anybody else remembers that, but that definitely uh, felt like vacation when you had one of those in your drink. Of course, it was Towel Animal Day on the Carnival Ecstasy, so they did it up with all the different uh, towel animals. Of course, this little deck here is going to be for a lot of the entertainment, the DJ, steel drums, as well as the fun squad and cruise director kind of hosting all of those different deck parties. Um, and this is actually where they held the Halloween costume competition. Little Man ended up winning uh, the Junior's Halloween costume contest for the final sailing of Ecstasy. Uh, if you want to see that, I'll put the link in the, descri uh, the description box as well as uh, it'll pop up on this video here if you want to click on that. Of course, no Carnival Cruise would be the same without Guy's Burger, which of course is a part of the Lido deck here. On the other side, you do have the Blue Iguana Cantina. Now let's go inside on the Lido deck to the Panorama Bar and Grill, and they were just setting up for breakfast, not quite ready yet. Uh, again, this was probably about 5, 5.30 in the morning, so they had coffee readily available, which I enjoyed a cup, but uh, other than that, they were still kind of just getting things out. I do like the setup of the Panorama Bar and Grill because, of course, you know, you have all the buffet options in the middle there, and then on the end uh, for, you know, lunch and dinner, uh, you do have the deli as well as the pizza uh, place. Now also on the Lido deck, if you go forward, you have some outside decking that kind of wraps around the front of the ship. This is one of our favorite spots as well. Great area uh, for some quiet as well as some great pictures throughout the day and evening. Now right under those steps is actually where the bridge is on this ship.
and once you get up these stairs, you have such a beautiful view. Now it does get quite windy if the ship is sailing, but we got this video while we were docked, I believe in Cosmo for the day, um, and just uh, great weather, great area. Uh, if you go through that little tunnel there, that actually has some steps and you can go up into the gym from there. There's another tunnel on the left there, and that actually goes to the veranda cabins on deck 11. So you can actually access this area from four or five different access points. Now this area is also on the Lido deck. However, this is on the aft of the ship, so all the way back on the ship. And it's just a great little area to uh, grab a bite to eat, if, especially if you're having like pizza or deli, uh, since it's kind of right outside the door there. And coming up here is literally our favorite spot to eat a meal. Uh, now it is sometimes a difficult area to eat because it can be windy, the sun can be, you know, directly on you. But if you uh, get to this area at, you know, a good time during the day, it is just wonderful. So moving down one deck from Lido deck, deck 10 to deck nine promenade, you have the Serenity deck. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, we would get back to this area just because it was so dark, but you can access this area from the Lido deck, deck 10, or you can actually access it from deck nine through the Starlight Lounge, even though it's kind of an awkward walk through the lounge to get to Serenity. Uh, it's a little bit prettier taking it the other way, but you'll still get to the same area. Of course, you have hot tubs on the aft of the ship here, comfy chairs, as well as some nice shade. So great area to, you know, just nap, read a book, or just kind of relax. Now moving back up to deck 12, the sports deck, of course you have the splash area, the waterworks area, that little man definitely enjoyed on this cruise. Of course, a beautiful view from the sports deck down to Serenity. Now, if you see that circular area straight ahead, that is Camp Ocean on both sides, but above Camp Ocean is actually the owner suites on the Carnival Ecstasy. There's one on each side. Uh, there's only two rooms. And from my understanding, the Fantasy class is the only class that has those owner suites. And we actually got to walk into one on this sailing. So it was really cool to see. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get any video of that um, just because it was another guest that uh, invited us there and we just didn't feel like it was right you know recording you know personal belongings and things like that but it was an amazing room uh you know so much space and it, they have a great balcony of course overlooking the lido deck uh as well is wonderful on the left you have camp ocean which little man definitely enjoyed on this sailing
Now on deck 14, the sun deck, you can enjoy mini golf as well as the jogging track that wraps around the front of the ship there. This is another great spot to come to. Again, it's a little difficult when it's windy, the ship is sailing, but if the ship is still or you have really calm seas, absolutely wonderful spot to kind of just clear the mind and just take in the beauty of the ship. Now coming up, you actually have the glass ceiling for the atrium of the ship, that main hub of the ship. Now coming up is where we actually recorded the very last time the Carnival Ecstasy sounded its horn three times with guests on board. And one of the fellow guests actually got to do it. Uh, he ended up paying $4,000 for the opportunity to do that. Uh, of course, for, uh, for St. Jude Children's Hospital. So a great uh, cause and what a great experience. It was the very first time that a guest has ever been able to blow the horn. So uh, it's something that that person will remember forever. And we were able to meet that gentleman, such a nice guy. And of course you can't have a full ship tour without the iconic funnel. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, this is one of those cruises that we will remember for the rest of our lives. Of course, every cruise is special with different memories, but this one, uh, you know, it was just different. Uh, we were celebrating not only the life of the Carnival Ecstasy, but all of the fantasy ships that were scrapped, you know, during the pandemic that we never got a chance to say goodbye to. So uh, if there is, a, you know, a future cruise ship that gets scrapped, which I'm sure there will be, I definitely recommend that you guys try to be on it. I know we will. Again, thank you guys so much for the support. As always, hopefully we'll see you right back here in the next video or on a cruise ship one day. Catch you later.